What's up guys, I'm Justin Davis. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to do another hashtag no cheerleading review. Today we're just going to state the facts. We're gonna talk about this flight controller. It is a tiny, tiny little flight controller from Maytech. This is the F411WSE model and it is about a quarter of the size of the original F405 back there that's being installed in the Nimbus. This is a review coming up on the channel. It is a beautiful large scale long range airplane. So a uh, much bigger flight controller, way more powerful than this one. But the neat thing about this one is, is that we can stick this in much smaller airplanes, something like the Zod Orbit. This would have been beautiful to have when I was first putting a flight controller in that one. I had an original 30 by 30 stack in that and all the wires took up almost the entire bay inside the Zod Orbit. You guys can go back and watch that video if you'd like. But now that we have the F411 WSE model, it is so much smaller. And you can still hook up GPS to this guy. We can add crossfire on here and we can really send this flight controller. It also has iNav options on here for adding multiple types of GPS, regular GPS, GLONASS, whatever you want. I'm gonna show you in this video how you can wire up your GPS to this. Some of you guys might have never seen it before, but we're gonna show you how that's uh, going down on this board. It's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and do a quick overview and run around of the new Maytech F411 WSE Wing SE. Super tiny, 20 by 20 stack for any type of fixed wing airplane that you want GPS on. Here we go. Okay guys, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. I love it. This is where the FPV gets me really excited uh, because uh, my preferred choice for aircraft is actually fixed wing. Uh, I'm originally an airplane guy from way back when I was a kid, so this is really exciting stuff for me. This is a total geek out session. Um, the, the F411 WSE, it is limited compared to the much larger F405 um, models. If you wanna run up to like six servos, um, you, you can on those, you can much, run much more servos and you can also do iNav radar, which we're not really gonna talk about today because that's a much more advanced topic. But um, the F411 WSE is for someone who wants to add anywhere from a two to six S battery on board their aircraft. You can also run two motors with this flight controller. You can run up to four servos. So you're gonna be limited on your amount of servos, but um, four, four servos is pretty much um, a, a very standard set of servos. And if you're gonna run anything more than four, then you obviously want a bigger flight controller anyway. Uh, it's probably gonna likely be a much bigger plane. Um, your Delta wings and, and your regular FPV wings, they're only running two servos. Um, so you don't really need anything more than four servos. Um, so th that's what this, this little flight controller is for. It's for smaller applications. Now what's also cool is that, um, like I said, it does support multiple different GPSs. You can run the BN880, you can run the super small little M8. There's an, um, it's a little bit smaller for smaller airplanes, but today I'm gonna show you how to wire up the BN880. It's been a very reliable GPS for me, and check this out. This is the BN880, and it's like, comically the same size as probably even a little bit heavier as well than the Maytech F411 WSE, isn't that crazy? So now we have a wing flight controller that's about the same size as my favorite GPS, which is kind of funny. Um, but what's not funny about this is that there is a barometer on here. Um, you do have support for iNav, OSD, you have uh, two UARTs, you have two soft serial TX, and one 12C, um, and I'm gonna show you where those are. We're going to also show you how to hook up the GPS on here. That's been a big mystery for a lot of people. So um, the other cool thing about this flight controller is it does have switchable camera ports on here. So uh, if you want to do dual camera input into this flight controller on a fixed wing, so say you're out there a mile or so and you have a camera failure, your camera blacks out, something burns up, you can actually flip a switch on your radio and inside iNav, there is a way to add a dual camera setup on a switch, which is really great. So 
Um, sometimes when your camera dies, if you're flying long range, you'll still have OSD. And there have been a lot of instances where people fly to home using only their OSD um, to come back. And then once it gets into visual line of sight, you can go ahead and land it line of sight. But um, that is uh, kind of a scary situation. But hopefully that doesn't happen to you. But the cool thing is also that it does have 6 to 30 volt DC input, um, 2 to 6S LiPo. So we've got four servos, two motor support, and up to a 6S LiPo. So technically you could put this in a much larger aircraft, but eh, I don't really recommend it. So let's go ahead now, let's take a little closer look at the bottom level PDB, and then we'll take a look at the top level, and I'll explain some things to you in very simple terms. Now we're going to be looking at the lower level first, and this is the PDB. So this is where all of your power inputs come into. You also have some alternate power spots down here. Uh, and we're going to talk about how these signal wires hook up and what each ones are for. Uh, we have an alternate 5 volt and ground here just to start out. Um, up top here we have our ESC pads. And these are your signal S1 and S2. This is for the signal wire coming off your ESC. So um, this would be signal one for the first ESC and signal two for the second ESC. That's usually a white wire. Uh, we also have two positive pads right next to each other and we have two negative pads right here. So uh, very simply the ESC power wire is gonna hook up to these pads. You also have an alternate ground over here as well if you need it. Um, sometimes I just snip off the ground wire off the ESC. A lot of times I don't even use it. So over here we have the positive pad for your battery terminal. That's going to be where your XT60 or XT30 comes off of, the wires here, going off to power the model. And this is the harness for your signals coming up to the flight controller on the very top right here. Um, and this is cool because it just plugs in and powers the board. You don't have to have any type of wire going up to power that top level which is kind of nice. But we have a variety of pads here um, for adding uh, extra servos here. So um, the first two are going to be for your motor. S1, S2 is for your motors. And then it jumps up to S3 here. And these are where your servo signals come into. Um, so we have the S3 here, S4. We have VX top and bottom here. That's your voltage we have ground. So this would be one bar here across, one bar here, five and six here. So those servo wires can hook up here. You can direct solder them or you can put pins through these and you can just plug your servo lead straight into right here. So that's how you're gonna hook this up to a fixed wing. Um, you don't have to snip off that connector. A lot of times I like to put pins on here because I like to be able to hot swap things. And that's what I'm gonna recommend that you do. Just plug in your servo pin harness right there. Uh, makes it super easy if you have to replace something. So now we're gonna take a look at the top of this board. We're just gonna really easily start on this bottom rail right here. And I, I know this looks intimidating to some people, but just follow along close. And I'm gonna use people speak here so that you guys understand what the hell I'm talking about. Um, this, this stuff is not super complicated. The GPS, once you've done it one time, two times, you can probably, you know, with someone's help, you can get it yourself. Um, the biggest thing to remember for GPS hookup is that if we're using TX1 here, I'm just gonna jump right into this, TX1 and RX1. Um, I have a sheet here that explains the BNA80 hookups, and we're gonna take a look at that in a second, but the biggest thing that you have to know about this is that um, when you're hooking up your GPS, this is transmitting here. TX1 means that's the transmitting port. RX1 means that's the receiving port. Uh, when you hook the, the GPS up, on the GPS, grab your TX1 wire and put it here. Grab your RX wire and put it on TX because they need to be reversed. Whenever you're hooking up any GPS to a fixed wing, that is the way it's gonna work. The way that you test to see if your GPS is working, you go inside iNav, you go to the GPS tab, outdoors obviously, and see if you're getting any packets, any information from the satellites. If you're not seeing any type of packets inside iNav while you have your aircraft plugged into a battery, that means that you might need to swap these two wires. So um, you can go ahead and swap it if you think you did it wrong. 
Um, and, and a lot of times, once you swap it, your GPS will start working immediately after. So um, if you're going to use Crossfire on here, you're going to use TX2 and RX2. That will be the next ones uh, over underneath here. So TX2 and RX2 for Crossfire. And if you're going to do SBUS, you can also use TX2 for any type of XBUS, FR Sky, XM Plus type receiver. Um, you can use the 5 volt here and um, the 4V5 right here for your power. And then your ground is right here on this, this far right hand rail. Um, your RSSI is over here. You can also use SBUS here as well. They have it actually labeled SBUS. And we have another 5 volt tab here. We have ground here, ground here. And again, a 3 volt down on the very far left. 3 volt is for the spectrum receivers. You can also add a spectrum receiver. So it's cool. It does support uh, F port support and inverted uh, S port S bus pad as well if you need inversion. So um, pretty much everything here, even PPM, it will also do PPM. Um, but if you're using PPM, you want to share the RX2 pad and disable the serial RX pad on UART2. Um, so yeah, but most of us. Don't even worry about that. You're not going to be using PPM, most likely. Uh, also, if you're using the Crossfire receiver, don't enable any of the functions on the soft serial number two. But getting back to the GPS, let me go ahead and zoom out right here. Once you have reversed your TX and RX wires coming from your GPS, you have the SCL and the SDA, and then you also have the power hookups for your GPS. So I'm just going to grab this GPS here and zoom out a little bit further for you. And if we're looking at this GPS like this, we've got our guide here. And all you have to do is really just get the schematic here uh, off of the Banggood website. And it shows you the layout of these wires coming out. So SDA is this yellow wire, ground is black, the white one is TX, the green one is going to be RX. The red one is always the power wire, the VCC is your power, and the SCL is this gray wire right here. And those are just going to simply solder straight to the board. You're going to clip both of these off and follow your schematic and solder it straight up. And once you have your RX and TX reversed coming from here, all the rest of them just hook up to the actual labeled ports. Very simple. So now I have spun this around so you can see this bottom rail right here. And we're going to talk about these rails. Um, we have ground all the way across the bottom here. And we have an ST1 wire down here. That's going to be for your smart audio. If you decide to hook up smart audio to your VTX, it does support that, which is super cool. And speaking of VTX, your video signal wire is going to run up here. That's going to usually be your white wire or your yellow wire coming off your VTX. And next to that, we have C1 and C2. And C1 is obviously, um, C would be your camera. So you can have camera one here, camera two here. And the second one over, this one supports an HD camera. So if you're running uh, possibly something like the um, DJI camera on here, you could also do that. So um, camera one and camera two support. And you're going to set that up in the switches tabs. You don't have to do anything with the camera switcher inside the, the uh, ports tab. So don't worry about trying to find out which tab it's on in the ports. It doesn't actually exist there. You're going to go to the camera switcher uh, inside the switches interface in iNav. So um, the next one over is we have our LED rail right here. So we have LED 5 volt and ground. We have our buzzer rail right here and we have buzzer negative, positive and ground here. And up here we have our analog airspeed sensor. If you guys decide to put a pitot tube on your aircraft to measure your airspeed, you can do that here. So you have your signal here, your 5 volt here, and your ground here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this guy on the scale and see what kind of weight we get. The total weight is 8.5 grams. It's kind of amazing for the PDB and for the flight controller itself. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, I, I gotta say, guys, Grab one of these and do it yourself. Do this yourself and follow along with the schematics. If you've ever built a race quad, by all means, try to build your first fixed wing with flight controller. The first time you launch your plane in stabilized mode, um, it just makes things so much easier when you're first beginning out. So um, you just push the throttle up and use the right stick to steer the plane. It's, it's actually really cool. And all the telemetry that this guy can display 
up on the screen. The OSD is absolutely amazing in iNav. Um, so I highly recommend grabbing one of these and um, getting started with your, your iNav and your fixed wing experience. Um, this is the perfect place to start. This is a great little board and it will, it will power a, a variety of different type of airplanes. Um, and, but I would probably stick to the smaller type of uh, fixed wing aircraft for this flight controller. If you want to go big and add up to six servos, grab that F722 um, that I mentioned before. And uh, that's about it for this review, guys. Um, I got to give this one a 4.9 out of five stars. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty high rating, but it's also a lot of work from Maytex. So I think it's a pretty awesome, awesome little board. And this is going to be my go-to board now for all of my smaller aircraft. But thanks again for watching, guys. I'm Justin Davis. Hopefully you learned something today and uh, you had an honest overview and review of this Maytag F411WSE. Thanks again, guys. No cheerleading. As always, I'll see you on the next one. Take care.